We are living in a world that is dominated by fear. A world that is full of chaos, perils, and dispute. It is almost impossible to determine or predict the events of the next few hours, not to talk about that of the next few days, months, or years. So many things are not right in this present world, and all these things seem to stimulate fear in us. But the child of God is never meant to fear or be afraid. Even in the midst of this chaotic experience, as difficult as it may seem, how could anyone be still and confident in God, even though so many things still appear to go beyond our control? So many things are totally wrong and needs to be fixed. But why should we not fear? Why should we still choose to trust in the arms of God, who is mighty to save? And to make matters worse, we are talking about a God who is not even seen with the eyes. This God is the one we are charged to trust in. He is the same God we are charged to believe in in the place of our fears and in place of the circumstances that instill fear within our hearts. So, in 1 Timothy 2.7, we have a revelation of what we have not received from God. We have not been given the spirit of fear or timidity. What we have rather received is the spirit of power, love, and of a sound of mind. Matthew 6, 25 through 27 says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to a stature? No matter how anxious you are, you can never get anything positive from it. Anxieties always worsen the situation of people rather than bringing solutions to them. God is not against us when we think about how to advance and to make life better for ourselves, but He is against whatever robs us of His joy in our hearts. Fear becomes a rival with God. When we allow it to fill our hearts, there is never any anxious man who can worship and praise God with joy. A man that gives room for fear in his heart inevitably displace God in his heart. But anyone who allows the joy of the Holy Spirit to fill his or her heart will displace fear. Although the world is full of challenges and troubles, believers have an inside strength that enables them to keep sailing through the storm. God is not the author of our fear. What this means is that whenever you and I observe that we are living in fear, it is not God who originated it. It is not God who sends fear into us. He never does that. As a matter of fact, at salvation, what we have received is the spirit of adoption. Romans 8.15 For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We must not at any time refer to God as the one who authors our fear. He does not want us to live in any kind of fear at any point in time. We know that God is love. In the scriptures in the book of 1 John 4, 18 say that there is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. This means there is no fear in God, and because we are in God, and are born of God, we have victory over fear. 1 John 4, 18 and 5, 4. The devil is our enemy and he tries to input fear into our heart. He likes to do this so as to distract us from what the word of God says to us. This is because once we have fear in our hearts, we become distracted and begin to live in fear and in doubt, which makes us unfit to receive anything from God. 
James 1, 6 through 8. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A clear vision of God's promises, a very important solution to fear, is hinged on us having a clear vision of God's promises, which is all over the scriptures. Our trust in God's word is the answer to our fears. Whenever fear is triggered in our heart, we will effectively respond based on the level and the amount of the word of God that we have received and that we have exposed ourselves to aforehand. Hence, we have an admonition to allow the word of Christ to dwell in us in all wisdom, Colossians 3.16. This will be the building block to withstand the evil days when fear comes with its surge to sway us off the promises of God. We cannot uphold our fears and the word of God at the same time. No, we can't. The latter being in the place extinguishes the former. So what we must go for is God's word. We must uphold it dearly. So as to be able to overcome fear and the other vices of the devil from time to time, our engaging of God's word is birthed from a clear-cut revelation. Part of this revelation is that God is greater than every one of our fears. He instructs us not to fear at all. Isaiah 41.10 Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Sometimes we take instruction as a suggestion, whereas it is an instruction. There is a difference between instruction and suggestion. To instruct is to require of, and it usually comes from one who is in higher authority. While to suggest is to simply offer an opinion, and the person it is offered to is not under any compulsory obligation to do what the suggestion says. So, God is not suggesting to us not to fear, fear not. He is rather instructing us not to. He has the authority and power both to keep us from evil and see us through whatever it is we are currently going through and will go through. All we need to do is let our hearts trust and hold on to these reassuring words that has never failed and will never fail. Faith above fear, naturally, we are bound to succumb to the circumstances around us. The things surrounding us are sometimes very depressing and most discouraging, but God has already allayed our fears out of his very many promises in the Bible. What we must seek to do is rest on his words. We must believe in them, confess and meditate therein at every time and with every opportunity we have. This is how to make our way prosperous and to surely have a good success. We must rise in faith, the certainty born out of God's word. This is how we overcome fear. It is how we live to the fullness of the life that we have received from God, the abundant life. So, our faith in God's word is the ultimate solution. It is how we win the unleashed war of fear, seeking to cripple us and all that belongs to us. We must have faith above fear. Read your Bible. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. There's no substitute for the simplicity of reading the word of God. What is faith? Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11 verse 1. This is the quintessential definition given in the Bible. Faith assures us. 
It is the certainty that what we have risked to believe about the truth of God will not be in vain. Hope is a risky thing. We often don't exercise it when things are going well. It is when things have taken a turn for the worse that we engage hope. Hope always points to better than what we are experiencing now, even without any sign that there is a change on the horizon. This is where faith comes in. When we have nothing tangible to anchor our hope in, faith provides that immovable assurance. Faith binds to our hearts the truth of God and keeps us believing when we cannot see. No wonder God's children have a desire to grow this precious commodity of the Christian life. Faith makes the invisible reality of God's kingdom visible to us. When anxiety and fear grip us because we don't know where the provisions are coming from, faith fuels our minds to believe. Faith moves us to trust God to provide for us because He provides for the birds. Faith makes it possible for us to please God. The greatest expression of faith occurs when we surrender our lives to God. Anyone who comes to Him first believes that He is, and because He is, He will also reward those who seek Him. This is the truest sign of confidence, not just to believe that there is a God, but to surrender to Him.